We're in Burma, where historic drama has just unfolded. Let me set the scene for you a little bit. Like in any country, the fight over the throne has been tough. Good. Ubi Eda is good. <laughs> In fact, the fight is still ongoing as we speak. Okay. Could you look me in the eye, please? Yes. Like in many countries, the road towards democracy has been long. But nowhere has a dream turned so fatally into a tragedy as in Burma. But we don't know that yet. Before the tragedy, there was hope. Before that, it all began with a woman and a military. A lot of people in downtown, they take to the street, holding whatever weapon available. Uh, I can hear some gunshots now coming from downtown. I think most probably it is, it is taking place in front of the city hall. On the eighth day of the eighth month, in 88, the military violently cracked down an uprising by the people. to do is to keep out of politics. We don't want the military to s split up. We want the armed forces to keep to keep together, but to keep out of politics. The military put Aung San Suu Kyi in house arrest and kept her there for nearly 20 years. One day, the military announced that they were ready to step down from power and make real democracy. They had made a seven-step roadmap to follow. The plan was enshrined in what was to become their most sacred book, the Constitution. After decades of hard power, it looked like the military was ready to exchange the uniforms for suits and the swords for words. You know, the roadmap is very important for our country. Transformation of the country into a democratic state. We have to take step by step, systematically. There's a seven step roadmap which was announced by our Prime Minister on the 30th of August, and now we are implementing this roadmap. And the release of Mitsuki will it come very soon? But everything is, uh, you know, we are working for the best. Thank you very much. They did release her but under their conditions. They had put a clause in the Constitution that specifically barred her from ever becoming Burma's president. The Burmese pro-democracy leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, has been released by the country's military rulers. The moment that many thousands of Burmese people had been waiting for for years. Aung San Suu Kyi, a free woman, she waved and smiled at the thousands who'd gathered to witness this historic moment.
On the 11th day of the 11th month, 1100 battalions were sent to the driest part of the country to inaugurate a new capital with a new parliament. In 2011, the military installed a so-called civilian government. They had promised the people democracy, and so they would get. ตํารวจบ่มาตํารวจหนาเลยพี่ปู่รั่วบาเลยตํารวจหนาไม่เลยลูกชิงเออตํารวจจ้องหมดติตํารวจหนาไม่เลยตํารวจซ้อเลยล
ဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီဒီ
ဒီမိုကရီစီကိုလိုလားလို့တချိုးလဲဆိုရှာပူကြာရင်နဲ့ဒီလိုတွေဖြစ်တာတွေရှိတယ်။ညာကြီးကျွန်တော်တို့အက
from within. Pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi has taken her place in Myanmar's parliament, ushering in a new political era after years of military dictatorship. The Nobel Peace Laureate and other newly elected members of her party pledged to safeguard the constitution. It's quite a change for a woman who's been incarcerated most of the last 20 years. So when it arrived at the Instituto, a lot of media, I told them, hey, rebels are coming, rebels are coming. <laughs> Well, actually, we are rebels. We have struggled along so many years, nearly three decades. And they regarded as, as a above ground insurgents, not underground. <laughs> Aung San Suu Kyi and her party only hold 8% of seats in parliament, so at first glance, they don't seem to have much leverage. Our objective was to continue our struggle for, based on our political principles. To amend the constitution and to get truly democratic state. I have a tremendous goodwill towards the military, so it doesn't in any way bother me to sit with them. I'm pleased to be sitting together with them. But you would like to either reduce their presence or not have them in the parliament? We, we would like our parliament to be in line with genuine democratic values. It's not because we want to remove anybody as such. Lack of confidence. If you have to pinpoint one, the, the greatest weakness, that's it. Lack of trust and confidence. The, nobody trusts anybody. <laughs> uh, this, this is a result of years and years of dictatorship, authoritarian rule. You all have to, have to be careful. You don't know who's informing on whom. And this lack of trust has seeped into our very bones, in a sense. So this does not help to bring about reconciliation. After 20 years in confinement, the people's leader had entered parliament. The air was filled with hope and anticipation. The world suspended the sanctions and the country was lifted out of isolation for the first time in 50 years. It was a historic moment. The international community believes that we are ongoing trust on what we are moving our reform. That is, you know, so wonderful. Even US President Sir Hillary Clinton and UK Prime Minister and your, you know, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, King Norway. And Japan, all the whole people, the whole, you know, uh, president, prime minister, and also, pay visit to Myanmar. That is a great change. The great changes in Myanmar. That is so important. Within a short time, it's very difficult to get trust within a short time. Even American solution, American Tamara, Yamanaka, Matakama, Malawi, Chanola, Obama, Nijay, Lavare. 
ကျွန်တော်တို့အချိုးကြီးစုကပနကလုံးအခွင့်အလမ်းနေကျွန်တော်တော်လေးရတယ်အစီပွားရေးပိတ်ဆို့ထားတဲ့အတွက်ကြော
after 50 years at the helm, then it's not very surprising that they got used to thinking that they were the only ones capable of keeping the country together. Now, the new generation just uh, just yelling and shouting and demanding that you are our mother. We have no hope for our future with education and have everything. So you are the savior. Please try it again, my mother. She has quite a lot of ability and efficiency and any other things become make herself the uh, gradually with the esteemed leader, you see. She clearly declared that, I want to be president. I will be the president. She precisely already declared that, already. But when you talk about the 59 or 82, I mean, but the most important thing is the F. Of course, so simply margin I also say not to become the president. As the book couldn't be touched by anyone but the military, Aung San Suu Kyi saw only one way of becoming the country's president to talk directly to them and convince them to remove the clothes. But nobody seemed interested in such talks. Only one man was willing to listen to her. Once the third highest ranking general in the entire military dictatorship, Schreman had expected to become president in the new democratic era. But when appointments were made by the outgoing dictator in 2010, he was bypassed when the grant posts were handed out. Schreman was only given the position as Speaker of Parliament and not even included in the president's cabinet. The attempt to sideline an ambitious man should turn out to cause unexpected troubles for the leaders in white. Enemy of your enemy is your friend. I think that's what have been. He's a very smooth operator. He's a politician. The Paka and any net Bobby or Chase had done in Pilano, Janu Padia, and Yanto Yoda. He's thinking of personal agenda. He's thinking of the those two he will become the president. But up to now, Tong San Suji has very few knowledge about the, how the government system is working, what happened in the last 20 years in the, the military and the government side. So I think whether he liked it or not, she liked it or not, he, she needed someone who have to give the share the knowledge and give the advice. She's planning uh, how to move, play uh, with these uh, uh, strong people in the military. I think that uh, she, I think that will be walkable uh, with the Shuman, you see. But in the politics, there was no friend or no enemy at all, you see. At the time, some men will be friend, some men will be uh, enemy, enemy uh, oh, some sometimes hostility, and sometimes friendship, okay. Tao San Suu Kyi, you know, Tao Ne San Naku Ne, Jabya Yui Kao Pue, Tao San Suu Kyi, Nai Ya Chi Biro, Tu Ne Tao San Suu Kyi, Sa Bi, Tui Ke Ba De, Ti Ke Ba De, Tu Jao Le Na Le Ke Ba De.
Tulu sahaya pusu ini, tu ne, tu ne, kenai ngan tu, muda jusi buat tu pusu ini, buang sahaya me, di lule sejeh ma, tanda tanda cakap ay. How much do you think the Ushuman can able to amend the Constitution 59F? Because to amend the, the Constitution, you need at least one vote from the military. So I think Ushuman can deliver the result. Ushuman agreed to discuss a motion in the Parliament for the amendment of the Constitution. เอ็ดตัวนี้เนี่ยเลยงั้นจะกูสารลงกูเปลี่ยนเลยพูดด้วยไม่รู้นี่เนี่ยเอ็มดามาเซเว่นสารลงอาบีมุเลพูดกันไ
Bari Pikala Soro, Chanuaro, Dikisario, Terren Wayne, and a lot of Chiba, Bari Gomaya, Lugiria Nibidoma, Tao General Petro Bidoma, Badia Town, Sabido, Pionari, and Lota Pudani, Chiba. But about a general or you look Pionari, my Pietome, Sabido, Badi Gomaya, Jiga, the Chuani, San Egibido, Timja Javare, General Timaran, or a Sunny and General Cassani and Lamentiona. But on Yarin. You know who did that? Although I don't know who ordered that transfer of power, my assumption is that old man, senior general Tan Shui, is still influential. Nobody, nobody will think about that leadership change. He can only give that kind of order. Behind the scenes, the old man was still pulling the strings. He had ruled the country with an iron fist for two decades. It was him that had put the sacred book in place and ordered democracy, and was now watching that every move was conducted in accordance with the script. Under his authority, the military enriched itself by exploiting the country's resources. He built a vast new capital and named it Nipido, meaning the seat of kings. The day he stepped down, he divided his power in two, appointing a commander of the army and a civilian president. In the 2011, there's some senior leadership of the army. But nobody knew who would become a president. Nobody knew. One day you were there, you became president. You became speaker of the house. You became at the lower house, upper house, etc., etc. And beyond that, became the chief of staff. As the spiritual guardians of the country, the monks and the astrologers had always had a powerful role in society and a vital say in all aspects of Burmese life. Meonai was different. He was chosen to lead the army because the old man checked his astro astrology. That's why he became the commander of the army. <laughs> Not his military proficiency. <laughs> his stars are at the top. The old man's biggest fear was the woman that had always been in his way. Even with her in house arrest, had he engaged four astrologers to foresee any threat that could come from her side. With 59F in place, had he finally released her. And only with that secure, could his seven-step roadmap move forward to its final stage, to hold free and fair elections. They choose the election date on November 8, 2015, one of the top astrologers advised. So if it was held on the 8th November 2015, you will win a landslide victory. Come on. 
Survey of the whole country is that, is that they, will, they will win handsomely. General Himana or Dia Yaganum, no, Dia Yanu Himane, do not be me. The gay, a chili man's <laughs> web is our own. But as, a, as you know, the result was quite the opposite. By dusk, Results were coming in thick and fast. In one big city, they captured 100% of votes. The party of the fighting peacock. Aung San Suu Kyi and the people of Myanmar have waited 25 years, and the NLD, the National League for Democracy, her party, has won that crucial majority to get to this point today. One of the top astrologers advised but sometimes they are totally wrong. <laughs> but losing, losing the election, he went to, to a village and shaved his head and became a monk. Even with the election victory safe, the battle was not over. So Aung San Suu Kyi wrote letters to meet the commander of the army and the president. But she got no replies. Weeks pass by. She wanted the keys to the kingdom. But the corridors of power were haunted by misdeeds of the past. For 70 years, vicious wars had been fought against the country's ethnic minorities. Wars that justified the military's existence as guardians of the sovereignty of the nation. Were she to get the throne, she would inherit a deeply wounded country. Then one day, she received an invitation. Not from the one she expected, but directly from the old man. She was able to meet with Senior General Dan Shui. And there, he admitted that you must be the leader of our future, something like that. We discussed that we hope that transition will be smooth. At the same time, we are expecting for the future of government and co in cooperation with the military, military commanders. We don't 
have any intention of uh, reprisal or retaliation of the previous past events. We're just looking forward for the betterment of the people. No, I think there's a mostly about, you know, she, maybe she wants to grant the, the safety of the uh, senior General Tan Shui and the family. And also maybe she, General Tan Shui said he, he will also the ready to accept the decision made by the, the people. I think there's a, some, something like the mutual interest on both sides. With the blessing of the old man, suddenly everybody was ready to meet her and negotiate the conditions of a transfer of power. ဆနစ်တခုကဆနစ်ပြောင်းတဲ့ခါမှာခံစင်းစားဘဝကလွယ်လဲလို့ကမထင်ပါနဲ့ဆနစ်အဟောင်ကိုကြိုက်တယ်
it seemed that despite decades of struggle, she would be tied to them in ruling the kingdom. But then, they had always been bound together. In the 1940s, General Aung San led the fight for Burma's independence against the British colonial powers. The country needed unity and strength to gather on the inside and to protect itself on the outside. But it was no easy task because the country was rich and varied. It had rivers and mountainous areas, hills and jungles, and a number of ethnic and religious people. Karen, Kareni, Chin, Kachin, Shan, Mon, Rakhine. Aung San proposed to unite all the country's people and founded Burma's independence army. By standing together, they could get the British out and he succeeded. It was at an early hour, specially chosen by Burmese astrologers, that Rangoon marked Burma's full assumption of independence. In place of the Union Jack, the Burmese national flag was hoisted with all due ceremony. Shortly after, Aung San was brutally assassinated by political rivals. Wars broke out with the ethnic people. The people lost their founding father, but he had left them a military and a daughter. She always mentioned that she was brought up in the hands of the NCOs around her father. He had a fashion whoever is an army, but they are still do not accept the rule of the Hong Sanji. It's wasn't a grudge. Well, as you know, since independence, when her father was assassinated, it was a known fact that he's the architect of our independence. He's the founder of Bama Army. So they were the sons or grandsons of Bojo Hong San. And then when Milji come to Boba. Ami is the father, Ami is the mother. For now they would share the kingdom and were tied together as brother and sister. But she wasn't going to give up her plan to unseat the military from the palace. After all, she was the true heir to the throne. Constitution bars her from becoming the president, but today she threw down the gauntlet to the Myanmar military. The Constitution says nothing about somebody being above the president. I've said I'm going to be above the president. Oh, oh I've already made plans. <laughs> Thank you very much. Quite what she intends isn't clear, but the Constitution, she said, would not present an impossible obstacle. Constitutional state means that all the president, all the uh, all the chief of the department, well under control now. See, very wise step, you see. And they accuse us. What is that? Democratic dictatorship. 
Bravo. <laughs> I like the <that> terminology. <laughs> now she has come to the state, being control everywhere, every, every, every ministry. She's like a tiger or a bull. She never let it go. <laughs> it's a credit to the late Ukoni. He was an expert in constitutional literature. So he lived through all the articles and he found one loophole that the president can create a position for anybody or any status. Well, I'll make all the decisions. It's as simple as all that. If I'm required to field a president who meets the requirements of um, Section 59F of the Constitution, all right, we'll find one. This president will carry out <coughs> whatever wishes he have at all to achieve. And even now, the president is a uh, uh, schoolmate. And very simple, very uh, soft man, and soft thinking, soft spoken. As the president, the, NH, the president will carry out any sort of things to comply with her desire, you see. So, so she can want everything now, more than president now, you see. Now she can handle everything, you see. So that is why we cleverly move that, that again, again, able to carry out by Dr. Tsuchi all of the uh, powers. Because we have a majority of the votes of the parliament, so we won. Actually, she didn't have all the powers. While she had learned the game well, and played by the rules. The military hadn't left the stage, and they responded with their language. Violence. On Sunday afternoon, Myanmar state-run news MRTV reported that one of the government legal advisors to Aung San Suu Kyi was shot and killed by a sole gunman. Police have a suspect in custody. Kony was shot dead at Yangon International Airport January 29th while holding his young grandchild. Despite many unanswered questions regarding the murder of Ukoni, many here in Myanmar see it as a sign the government of Aung San Suu Kyi has yet to firmly establish the rule of law. The murder is also seen as a warning to those who want to reduce the power of the military. Police say his killer's motives weren't political, but one of his friends believes he was murdered because of his legal work. We sense that he was hated by other, some people, but I didn't expect to that vicious. As if it is, actually it's a mafia. Still, the, the main cover is still missing. Ukoni was shot directly in the head in front of the Yangon International Airport. He was immediately taken to Yangon Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Aung San Suu Kyi didn't attend the funeral. She stayed silent and withdrew from the public eye. She's shrewd. She can guess the main reason. She says something, it will get worse.
Was it some kind of warning for her that if you go too far? Maybe, maybe. But there was another problem with this lawyer. He was a Muslim. Back in 1947, when Aung San had united the country's ethnic people, one group was believed to have stayed on the British side. The ruling Buddhist majority agreed that they were traitors and that they did not belong in the country. The Muslim Rohingyas. The Buddhists called them Bengalis, considered people that had come from abroad. <laughs> Well, Rakhine was a time bomb that was ticking. So you had this rising uh, Rakhine uh, nationalist feeling, um, and where these two communities, Muslim and Buddhist, also began to see each other, not just began, but increasingly saw each other as uh, their main enemies as well. Uh, and then you had, I think, not surprisingly, the emergence in 2016 on the Muslim side, uh, a new insurgency and a very militant insurgency. The group is poorly equipped. It has guns, small homemade bombs, and what it describes as a narrow mission to protect Rohingya Muslims. <laughs> The deep-rooted Rakhine conflict was toxic, and there were powerful interests at stake. To bring peace to the region and human rights to the oppressed people, Aung San Suu Kyi needed a powerful ally. And so, turned to the international community for help. You know, Kofi Annan, he, she invited Kofi Annan. So someday you have the, your family and your wife and your husband and your children quarreling in your home. You call all the people and look what happened. That's sometimes it is a little bit difficult. You should do yourself first. Tomorrow we will start traveling to the time. You will see for yourself the problems on the ground down. You will be able to assess for yourself of the roots of the problems are. Not in one day, not in one week. But I'm confident that they will get there. The Rohingya Muslims were stateless. Aung San Suu Kyi had promised to implement the findings of the commission, knowing that it would lead to citizenship for the Rohingya Muslims. What she couldn't know was that this was to become the Achilles heel of a lifelong project for peace and democracy. Hundreds of people have rallied in Myanmar to denounce an advisory commission led by visiting former UN chief Kofi Annan. The Buddhist majority in Rakhine insists foreigners can't understand the region's history. It's very narrow path to damage control that problems. It is big problems. For example, for our naval aspect, your ships heading by the can, no problem. Heading by torpedo, mm, no problem. Heading by nuclear bone, sorry. Now, after August 25th, nuclear bone hit Myanmar. Yeah, 
Authorities say some 150 insurgents launched a series of raids on police posts in the early hours. ตรุยะหูไม่ยงจีหูบาเพลโซตะแพ่มาตะมรอกะแลดาโกหูเลคขันมาบ่หูตะแพ่กะยะไคไดนาเดเลดาโกเลคขันมาบ่หูเดคข
to protect the country's minority. He's seeking to deflect the Rohingya crisis that so far sent almost 150,000 Rohingya Muslims free. She should use her voice, that's true, and she hasn't, and that's deeply disappointing. Silent and in many cases complicit in messaging on this issue. I think when you get power, you go into a cocoon. You go into an us against them attitude. I think Mel Lang knows, Mel Lang, that senior general Mel Lang knows the problem, and then she, she's enjoying the situation. While Aung San Suu Kyi had put herself above the president, there was one man who was ultimately above them all the commander of the army. The commander of the army was accountable to no one but the commander of the army. He held the monopoly on violence and could take back full power of the country whenever he liked, as history had proven. For the military, the situation was not a crisis. It was an opportunity to bring her down. ยิมมาดัมรอเนเดียโดเซอัมยูซีจองทอกแคมเวโกดิเซมาลาเซชิเอเนมอลอยบายงาจังโกมิวมิวโรแคมมานีมหาเปนดูลาเปนเจนชี
in that sense, she was ultimately above them all. Prominent qualities of Don was that she was honest, straightforward, sometimes too good to respond. Well, that's her nature. In some cases, she became mature. <laughs> Her attitude to everybody, she wanted to be a mother to them. During 1988, she was sometimes impulsive, but politically very wise. When I watch her movement and speeches and everything, dealing with the people, I became impressed. I thought myself she could become a leader of the country. as a mother. So she tried to formulate how to treat them, how to communicate with, with them, whether general or ethnic people or whoever he may be. Her attitude is she doesn't want to take action against anybody. She, she would like to give uh, some kind of lessons and she would like to change their attitude with moral leadership. Everybody is in equal in her own assumption, but it depends on their feedback. She's good, it's quite all right. She's bad, she'll try to control him, or she won't take action against him. She'll try to Came him patiently. She grew up amongst the generals, so she spoke the language they knew in order to tame them, change their military minds, to stop them thinking like dictators. But while they continued their struggle over who would be true heir to the throne, the head of the family, the king of kings. It happened, like in any family, that even the fiercest of foes end up looking more alike than they differ. Like brother, like sister. Lanes. Ten lanes there, ten lanes here, it's 20 lanes. You can drive close your eyes. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Do you know where they live? Utan Shui and previous military commanders. And also Utensei. Well, I'll show you. 
<laughs> they stay with the full security details. Huge mansions. This is the place. Udanshwe, Stacy is also here. Hiroshima here. And as to the president house there. Well, she stays in a house that is meant for the ministers. And each mansion there are about three acres. They all live in the same place. Yeah, immediate neighbors. Behind closed doors, far away from the people and the world, they kept their fight on going. All the while the country was falling apart at the seams. The entire area has been burned out. Uh, the residents are evidently all gone. You, you know, it shows a, a, a clear swath of destruction, presumably caused by arson. These satellite images from Human Rights Watch show the extent of the destruction there. Uh, it shows that, once again, the government of Burma does not have the situation under control. The fact-finding mission has concluded, on reasonable grounds, that the patterns of gross human rights violations and serious violations of international humanitarian law that it has found amount to the gravest crimes under international law. Genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. The main perpetrator of the serious human rights violations outlined in our report, including of the acts of sexual violence, is the Myanmar military. We are deeply disappointed that State Councillor Dawang San Suu Kyi has not used her position or her moral authority to stem, prevent, or condemn the unfolding events in Rakhine State. Let me be clear, Mr. President. There is no ethnic cleansing. There is no genocide. The leaders of Myanmar, who have long been striving for freedom and human rights, will not espouse such policies. The outside world can choose the issues on which they wish to focus. We who are living through the transition in Myanmar view it differently from those who observe it from the outside and who will remain untouched by its outcome. For us, it is the broad, all-encompassing map of the future of our country, as well as the small details of our everyday life. I think the country is in an emergency situation. I think that we have a country of endemic ethnic and religious conflict. One of the poorest countries in the region, opening up to the world. The crisis has been devastating. It's had a knock-on effect on the possibility of transition as a whole the feeling on the outside that the government has not responded in anything like a satisfactory way has led to an intense cooling of relations between the international community through the United Nations with the Myanmar government. We're still living in a world of more or less exactly the same mentalities that had existed before, and it extends way beyond the army. I mean, you know, like it or not, I mean, this is, this is uh, army rule has been around for longer than I've been alive, I mean, for more than well over 50 years, half a century. So it's not just the army, it's everything else has been shaped by army rule. And so it's not a country which was democratic five years ago and can snap back to democratic practices. Everything has to start with where we were a few years ago uh, under army rule, but again on the, on the uh, tail end of seven decades of violent conflict as well. The 8,333rd meeting of the Security Council is called to order. 
The provisional agenda for this meeting is the situation in Myanmar. The massive refugee emergency that began one year ago in Rakhine State, Myanmar, has become one of the world's worst humanitarian and human rights crises. The world can no longer avoid the difficult truth of what happened the in The population of Rakhine State was subjected to a campaign catastrophes in our modern history, resulting in grave violations of their human rights and indeed it's have led to the displacement of some 900,000 people. The military and police went from house to house. Reports of systematic and widespread human rights violations and abuses against the Rohingya community in Rakhine State. As well as I now give the floor to the representative of Myanmar. Mr. President, our gathering here today could have been a different one had there been no terrorist attack. It would have been a happier occasion to stop taking implementation of the Rakhine Advisory Commission or an international pledging conference to help poverty alleviation. And so, <coughs> sorry. and socio-economic development of all communities in Rakhine. <clears throat> the provocative ter terrorist attacks of October 2016 and August 2017 have affected the course of our earnest endeavor to build a peaceful, fair, fair and prosperous future for the people of Rakhine. But nothing shall stop our determination to continue our effort to achieve our objective. So this is what it came to. Despite so much hope, they couldn't make it. Perhaps she was never who the world thought she was. Neither the villain, the world sees her as now. History is never over. But for the story I have told you, this is, unfortunately, the end.